Ever pondered about why some people are born with certain health conditions? Could genetics be the culprit? In the fascinating world of biology, genetics act as the blueprint of life, guiding the growth, development, and functionality of every organism. Genes, tiny segments of DNA, carry instructions that dictate physical traits like hair color and can influence the risk of developing certain health conditions. But what happens when these genes go awry? Sometimes, due to various reasons, genes can mutate or change. These alterations can lead to a variety of health conditions, collectively known as genetic disorders. These disorders are often present from birth and can dramatically impact an individual's life. From affecting a single gene to an entire chromosome, genetic disorders are as diverse as they are complex. Today we delve into three prominent genetic disorders, starting with Down syndrome. So buckle up as we embark on this journey to unravel the mysteries of our genetic makeup. First on our list is Down syndrome, a condition that affects one in every 700 babies born in the United States. This chromosomal disorder is the most common genetic condition, occurring when an individual has a full or partial extra copy of chromosome 21. This additional genetic material alters the course of development and causes the characteristic features of Down syndrome. These features often include distinct facial attributes, such as an upward slant to the eyes, small ears, and a protruding tongue. Individuals with Down syndrome may also experience low muscle tone and short stature, but Down syndrome doesn't just affect physical traits, it is also associated with intellectual disability and developmental delays. It's important to note, however, that the intellectual and developmental changes are usually mild to moderate, and individuals with Down syndrome can lead fulfilling lives with proper support and resources. Down syndrome is typically identified at birth or shortly thereafter, through physical signs and genetic testing. Prenatally it can be detected with screening tests and diagnostic tests. When it comes to treatment there's no one-size-fits-all approach. Management of Down syndrome involves addressing the individual's specific needs and may include speech, occupational and physical therapy, along with regular checkups to monitor health. Recent advances in medical technology have significantly improved the quality of life and life expectancy for individuals with Down syndrome. Today, with appropriate care and support, many people with Down syndrome live well into adulthood, participate in their communities, and lead rich, fulfilling lives. Research is ongoing in this field, with scientists continuously investigating the genetic basis of Down syndrome and exploring new treatment strategies. It's a testament to our determination to understand and support those living with this condition. Down syndrome, though common, is just one of many genetic disorders. Next, we explore cystic fibrosis. Scene script. Cystic fibrosis, a life-threatening disorder that damages the lungs and digestive system, is up next. Step into the world of cystic fibrosis, a genetic condition that predominantly affects the lungs but also the pancreas, liver, kidneys, and intestine. It's a tale of a faulty gene, a gene that changes a protein responsible for regulating salt and water in the body. This alteration results in thick, sticky mucus that can clog the lungs and obstruct the pancreas. Let's break it down. Cystic fibrosis is an inherited disorder, meaning it's passed from parents to children through genes. Each of us has two copies of the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator gene, or CFTR for short. If both copies of this gene are mutated, cystic fibrosis results. Now what happens when this gene goes awry? Well, the CFTR protein it codes for, which is found on the surface of many organs malfunctions. Instead of helping chloride ions move in and out of cells, which helps regulate salt and water balance in the body, it creates a bottleneck. This leads to a buildup of thick, sticky mucus in the body's tubes and passageways, particularly in the lungs and pancreas. Symptoms can vary and include persistent coughing, frequent lung infections, wheezing or shortness of breath, and poor growth or weight gain despite a good appetite. Diagnosis often happens in infancy, but with the advent of genetic testing many cases are now identified before birth. So, where are we with treatments? Well, there's no one-size-fits-all approach. Treatment plans are as unique as the individuals themselves and can include physical therapy to help clear the lungs, medications to thin mucus, and antibiotics to treat lung infections. There's also a new wave of treatments targeting the faulty CFTR protein itself, aiming to improve its function and reduce symptoms. Cystic fibrosis is indeed a challenging disorder, but have you heard about trisomy 13? Trisomy 13, also known as Patau syndrome, is a severe genetic disorder that affects many parts of the body. 
This certainly isn't a light topic, but it's one that's important to understand. Trisomy 13 is named after Klaus Patau, the scientist who first associated the condition with an extra chromosome. So, what exactly is trisomy 13? It's a condition where an individual has three copies of chromosome 13, instead of the usual two. This additional genetic material disrupts normal development, leading to severe physical and intellectual disabilities. Now let's delve into the causes. Like many genetic disorders, trisomy 13 typically occurs when there's an error in cell division. This error, known as non-disjunction, results in an egg or sperm cell with an extra copy of chromosome 13. This cell can then combine with a normal cell from the other parent, leading to a baby with three copies of chromosome 13 in each of its cells. The symptoms of trisomy 13 are wide-ranging and can affect many parts of the body. These may include heart defects, brain or spinal cord abnormalities, very small or poorly developed eyes, extra fingers or toes, a cleft lip or palate, and weak muscle tone. It's important to note, however, that the severity of these symptoms can vary widely from person to person. Currently, there's no cure for trisomy 13. Treatment focuses on managing symptoms and improving the quality of life for those affected. This may involve surgery for physical abnormalities, therapies for developmental issues, and a comprehensive care team to manage ongoing health problems. While trisomy 13 is a rare condition, with approximately one in every 10,000 newborns affected, it's a poignant reminder of the complexity of our genetic makeup. It underscores the delicate balance within our chromosomes that allows us to grow and develop normally. Trisomy 13, a rare but severe disorder, concludes our list of genetic disorders. But what does this all mean? We'll explore that question and more in the next segment. Stay tuned as we continue to unravel the mysteries of our genetic code. We've traveled through the complex world of genetic disorders, from Down syndrome to cystic fibrosis to trisomy 13. Let's take a moment to reflect on what we've learned. Down syndrome, a result of an extra chromosome 21, is the most common chromosomal disorder. It often results in distinct facial features, intellectual disability, and health complications such as heart defects. However, the degree of these symptoms can vary widely from person to person. With early intervention and proper care, individuals with Down syndrome can lead fulfilling lives. Next, we delved into cystic fibrosis, a life-threatening disorder primarily affecting the lungs and digestive system. This disorder, caused by mutations in the CFTR gene, leads to the production of thick, sticky mucus that can clog the lungs and obstruct the pancreas. Advances in treatment have significantly improved the life expectancy and quality of life for those with cystic fibrosis. Lastly, we explored trisomy 13, a severe chromosomal disorder resulting from an extra copy of chromosome 13. It leads to multiple malformations and health issues, often impacting the heart, brain, and other organs. Survival rates are low, and those who do survive usually face significant developmental challenges. These disorders are just a fraction of the many genetic conditions that exist, each with its unique challenges and complexities. Yet they all underscore one crucial point. Our genes play a fundamental role in our health and disease. They dictate our biological blueprints, influencing everything from our height and eye color to our susceptibility to certain diseases. However, genetics isn't destiny. Yes, they can make us more susceptible to certain conditions, but lifestyle, environment, and healthcare can also play significant roles. And as our understanding of genetics advances, so too does our ability to manage and treat these disorders. Remember, knowledge is power. Understanding these genetic disorders empowers us to better manage them and support those living with them. Our journey into the world of genetic disorders ends here, but the conversation doesn't have to. Knowledge is power. And the more we understand about conditions like Down syndrome, cystic fibrosis, and trisomy 13, the better equipped we are to offer support, empathy, and even contribute to solutions. There's a wealth of resources out there to continue this exploration. Websites like the National Institutes of Health or the Genetics Home Reference provide a plethora of valuable information. Online forums and communities can offer support and a sense of belonging for those affected by these disorders. And remember, every conversation, every shared article, every question asked and answered helps to raise awareness and understanding. It's through this ongoing dialogue that we can help to dispel myths, reduce stigma, and foster a more inclusive world. Each one of us can contribute to a world more understanding and supportive of those with genetic disorders. Until next time, stay curious and keep learning.